Does free shipping matter? Does every shop need a high ticket item to be successful? Do I feel mom guilt? So welcome back to my channel. My name is Dylan Jarris and I am an Etsy shop owner of about seven years. This is my husband, Wes. We are kind of in this together now and we've sold over $1.5 million in revenue on this platform, over a million dollars in profit. My whole background is corporate e-commerce. So now I am a full-time Etsy business coach and consultant where I'm helping hundreds of sellers just like you grow their shops. So today is part two of the Q&A. We are going to answer every question that is remaining that you guys have sent us over on Instagram. Now, if we don't cover a question that you guys have for us, definitely leave it below in the YouTube comments and we will address it next time. Do you recommend filing taxes quarterly or once a year? So one of the differences once you have a successful Etsy shop is you really need to think about your tax situation, including your estimated payments. So you're only gonna file a return once a year, just like you do right now. But as you begin to make more income on Etsy, you will have to file estimated taxes quarterly. I would definitely recommend talking to a CPA figure out exactly how to set those up and how much you should be paying. If you don't do this, there will be a big rude awakening at the end of the year. Shoot, Graham's up. So we're back with, with the baby. Um, this is real life, but you know, no excuses, right? Stay consistent. So we're here. <laughs> what is your advice for a new shop with interest in lots of product ideas, but unsure what products to start with? So what I would be doing right now is focusing more on the customer you want to sell to instead of the product itself. So instead of thinking about what do I sell? What is the product? What's going to be the winning market leader product? I would be thinking about, okay, whose money do I want to rely on for my income? And what are they all already coming to Etsy for, and then do your customer market research versus your product market research first. What are the five things you wish you knew before you started your Etsy business? Number one is that you don't have to do everything, that you can definitely hire things out, um, get some production partners involved, and that if you're not an artist, it really doesn't make a difference in how much money you can make on this platform. The second thing would be that there are shortcuts and things you can do to save time, whether that be making investments in, in different tools, learning different skill sets, and also by learning from other people. Um, I also didn't realize how lucrative the supplies category would be when I first started on Etsy, but I soon found that out. Um, and we do at least about $75,000 a year in just the supply category. I also didn't realize that we could make way more on Etsy financially than any other corporate job that we could have ever considered. I just did not realize the potential when I started. I also didn't realize when I started that it would become a family business. When we started, we were newly married. We didn't have kids yet, but now, you know, our kids are involved um, as much as they can be, you know, whether it be helping stack boxes or just, you know, simply making a mess of our inventory. They're really seeing this entrepreneurship firsthand and they're growing up with it. So they're learning that work ethic, which I think is really going to be a really big gift to them. Do you ever feel mom guilt while working full time? <laughs> what do you think, Graham? The reason I don't is because, you know, with the amount of money that Etsy is bringing in for us, it's always been able to provide great childcare for our kids when I'm not with them. So I feel like I'm able to give them the best and I feel really good about that. I actually feel like I'm a better mom when I'm doing things that are not only with the kids, when I have other things going on. It makes me really cherish the time with them more, but I definitely don't take the time with them for granted. And I like that they see me working hard too. When they grow up and, and get married, I want them to find someone who is you know an equally hard worker whether that be inside the home or outside the home just someone who's driven i hope they find someone like that so i feel good about working full-time um because you know i feel like i'm still able to give them the best how okay. do you rank your priorities like everything in your life how do they rank against each other wow that's a deep question so i'd say you know for us in our family the first priority is you know our relationship with god the second being our family and just supporting each other. A big way that we do that is in our work. And Dylan's always been extremely supportive of me when I've been on the boat and going to sea in the Navy. Now is my opportunity to pay that back a little bit and helping her uh, with the business. And that's been something that we've kind of grown together working on the business together. But we definitely don't have equal priorities all at the same time. You know, we don't really feel like the pie is cut up into equal pieces. Um, that whole idea of balance, I don't really believe in balance. I feel like each phase of your life has different priorities. And right now we are really focused on our family, our faith and building these businesses. And that is specifically for this phase of our life. And maybe in, you know, five to 10 years, it's going to be a little bit different, but that's what we're prioritizing now. And and we're definitely seeing the fruits of our labor for doing it that way. 
How do I research my ideal client? There's a lot of different ways to do this, but we definitely want to be researching profitable customer segments. And we're looking at where they shop. We look at what aesthetic they're drawn to. Are they more timeless? Are they more trendy? What are they already coming to Etsy for? Who are all the different people they shop for in their life? And also what expensive hobbies and activities are they involved in? That's proof of concept that they're willing to spend money on that thing. Should we just grow Etsy first or should we sell on other platforms as well? Definitely do Etsy first. It's it's the best place to be spending your time right now because once you establish yourself on Etsy, it's really going to help you expand onto those other platforms because you can direct traffic from Etsy to those other platforms. Do you always make decisions together or does one of you get the final say in your biz? So this is interesting. Wes and I do have our domains. You know, with our real estate, I would say that Wes tends to get the final say in that. I trust him and he's running it, he's making the calls and I wanted a little more hands-on at first just to, you know, be comfortable with things. But for Etsy, maybe it's different. What do you think about this one? So when it comes to making decisions for the Etsy business, we try to make them you know, together as much as possible. You know, there are times when we maybe don't see the same issue eye to eye. Uh, and in that case, a lot of times we'll probably just keep kind of keep talking about it until we reach some consensus. I would say there's been very, very few times where we really like disagree about something and have to make a, no, we're gonna do it my way type of decision. But in general, it's it's more the real estate is his domain, Etsy's more my domain. That's kind of where our interests lie, but we're both supportive to each other in each of those. If you could do it all over again, what would you do different? So what I would do different is probably hire help sooner. Um, we waited way too long to hire help. And I'm a person who I kind of have no quit when when it comes to building a business. But when you try to do it all yourself, at a certain point, you're really making it harder on yourself. And you can really create actually a lot of extra space for, for additional growth if you bring someone in and take some things off of your plate. So I wish I would have done that a lot sooner than we did. Should I wait to market my products until I have a certain amount of listings? No, no, I would get them out there. I have students who they've had one listing and they get sales from that one listing in their shop for the first couple weeks. Do not hold back on the marketing. Now, if you want to wait until you have, you know, maybe five to 10 listings, that might help increase multi-item orders, but do not delay marketing just because you have a lower number of listings. How can my Etsy shop recover from being on vacation? Is it truly death for the Etsy shop? No, you really just need to jumpstart things. So there's a lot of different tactics you can use to jumpstart things. It's kind of like jumpstarting a car and it's a lot of manual work to, you know, drive the traffic and to get the visibility up again, but that's where it starts. It starts with driving traffic organically. There are other things you can do with pricing and discount strategies, but it's not the death of your shop. It's kind of like if your car gets stuck in the mud, you just have to kind of push it out. That's kind of how I would view this. How did you learn about buying investment properties and using your Etsy income for that? So for our first rental, we learned a lot from the Bigger Pockets community. For those of you that are interested in real estate investing, that's probably the first place that you should start. Lots of great content there to, to learn about that real estate investing journey. And then we took that knowledge and then we put it into action. There's just been a lot of kind of learning on the job, you know, reading YouTube and then applying that and learning from our experience. How much is your course? I have two options for my program right now. If you are interested, I also have different installment payment plan options for those. If you wanna learn more about how those two options work, just reach out to me and I can go over what each one includes and the payment options for it. <laughs> Well, we did our best with the baby here, but I'm gonna finish up the questions. Is there a way to offer free local pickup delivery? If so, does that affect your star seller status? Thanks, Dylan. Yes, you absolutely can do that. Um, there's a place to mark delivered and you can select that it was a local pickup. Do you recommend a specific Etsy profit calculator? Um, yes, I would actually recommend my own. It really is very comprehensive and the way that it calculates your profit is really by an hourly wage for how long it takes you to fulfill that order. Whether it's a digital product and maybe it's five minutes of customer service or whether it's a physical product that you're spending 90 minutes on and you simply input the number of minutes that you take on each transaction or order for that item and it spits out the hourly wage that you receive when when you have that pricing. Okay, do reviews, favorites, and people following your store all help towards your store ranking and boosting the algorithm? Yes, all of that is positive and it helps. So get more reviews, get more favorites, and get more people following your store. Besides Etsy,
Etsy, what other incomes make up your monthly income you mentioned in your last video together? Etsy seems to be just a small part. Did Etsy get your success started or something else? Um, so my husband makes a lot of money in the military. We also make a lot in the digital product space. Uh, we make a good amount with real estate and then Etsy is part of that as well. So those are the main income streams, but I would say, you know, Etsy is related to what I do now in the digital product education space. So yes, Etsy probably did help get some of that started um, because I wouldn't be doing my teaching and coaching if it wasn't for Etsy. If I am switching product types in my shop, from digital art to handmade products, should I delete or hide my digital art? Um, I would be using site merchandising to lay your shop out in a way that makes sense. So site merchandising is all about how we lay our shop out, how it looks visually when the customer comes to your homepage, and there's a lot you can do to control how that looks. It depends on what your new handmade products are. If they're for the same customer, I probably would leave in the art, but if they're completely wildly different customers, then you might just wanna delete the art or just it. Do you use TikTok for your business, Etsy, Shopify? What is the best social media platform for Etsy? So the social media platforms that I recommend are really Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. Now they each have a different purpose. So for me and for my students, Facebook is getting some of the fastest results. We do have students who are heavy in TikTok and they're seeing really great results from that as well. Um, it's a bit less predictable, I would say, with TikTok. But if you are creating content for Instagram, I would 100% percent recommend repurposing that for TikTok at the very least. You already have it made. You can definitely repurpose it. So for Etsy, in terms of getting sales the fastest, I would say Facebook. In terms of the long game and getting your product in front of new people, I would say probably Pinterest um, just for long-term traffic. That's really the long game. And then for nurturing your current customers, really it's Instagram. How long do you wait to see if the change in SEO works? So I would wait at least three to four weeks. Um, I would not really be looking at your shop stats for any time period less than three weeks. Um, some people like to look at it on a daily basis or a weekly basis, and it's really, one, not always accurate enough, but if you do that, you will tend to get caught up in the daily ups and downs. If you're focusing too much on the day-to-day -day and your time horizon is not on the bigger picture, you're not gonna be capturing and recognizing those changes in the overall trend. What is the best source for researching purchasing behaviors for the clientele you want to target. So for this, I would say Instagram and Etsy. How to handle bad reviews from very fussy customers. Make sure you always, always, always reply and always refer to things in the listing that maybe explain something about the item that they are complaining about. Your response to that bad review is really a response to future potential customers. So really keep that in mind. You wanna handle it very professionally. You don't want to be snarky. You don't wanna have an attitude about it. And you want to look like the level-headed one compared to maybe the crazy review person. If you have a dying store with old items that are not selling, is it better to create new listings for each of the products or to try to improve the existing ones? So with this, I always recommend exhausting the potential of a listing before giving up on the idea. Now, there are a lot of different ways that you can repackage current listings to exhaust the potential of it. Oftentimes, if something's not selling, it's not necessarily that people don't want it, but maybe you're just not getting in front of the right people, the SEO is off, the combination of the listing photo and the price and the content or value is off. Sometimes Sometimes it just takes repackaging. You can do that to an existing listing and then renew it, or you could create a new listing from it. Either way really works. How often should I renew a listing? I would not be going in and renewing your listings all the time. I've seen and heard strategies like that, but honestly, I have never done it unless I've done a total revamp, repackage of a listing. Don't just be mindlessly renewing listings if you're not even changing anything about it or improving anything about it. How can you increase your average order value? There are so many ways to do this, so, so so many ways. Um, this is something we're really big on in my program, Multi Six Figure Etsy Blueprint. I teach you all the different ways to do this, but you can really do this through a lot of different add-ons and upsells. Um, sometimes your upsells can increase that average order value by 30% or more. So definitely focus on those upsell opportunities. If you need help with this, let me know. I cover this really in depth in my training. How can we compete with the big timers who have over 30,000 sales and 3,000 reviews and we have just opened our shop? 
Well, you really have to compete in more ways than just price. You have to have a better overall value proposition. So this means a better combination of your listing photo and your price. It means better value with the content that you're actually selling them, that they're actually receiving. It has to be more or better or both. Best ways to get favorites converted to sales. So you can do things like testing a discount, right? That's kind of the default. Everyone says, okay, just put it on sale and maybe it will convert those favorites to, to sales. But I would really be looking deeper within that listing and seeing why they're just favoriting it. If you're noticing you're getting a lot of favorites and you're not converting them, there's definitely something wrong with the listing. So I would be diving into diagnosing what is wrong and then fixing it. I have a whole lesson about this actually, but long story short, a discount alone is probably not going to be enough just to convert them. When your shop is new and you have open your shop with 20 listings, you have to post new listings daily or what do you recommend? There are some people who say, yes, you need to post new listings every single day. It doesn't have to be a daily thing, but you should be active in it. So that means, yeah, creating listings, maybe, you know, every week trying to have a new listing up and always be improving your listings as well. So the first time you publish a listing, it's probably not going to be the final effect of what it's going to look like a year from now. So the sooner you publish it, the sooner you'll start getting data on what customers are liking about it, what they're not liking about it, which customers are actually finding it, what they're searching to find it. So the point is you need to be active, whether that's publishing new listings or improving your current 20 listings. Where do you design your social media posts? I do this all in Canva, really simple, really easy. I don't really spend more than five minutes on it because it's not necessarily a profitable action step to me. And I think it's really important when you're building a business to really focus on spending your time on those actions that will help you make money. Is it a bad idea to have tight titles and tags in English and description in another language. So you really do want to be consistent here because remember the first 140 characters of your description really does matter for your SEO. So if your description is in another language, that would mean that you're not being consistent and consistency does matter. Has Wes ever looked into selling laser cut items specifically for the military? I'm guessing you could get bulk orders for entire units. So that is something that we talked about um, as a potential item we could sell with the laser but you know, the customers that I'm really targeting are much different. So it would kind of be like that farmers and brides situation where it's really hard to put them in the same shop. So just because the customers that our business is built on for you know seven years now um, is so different than the military kind of guy, we decided not to go that route. Though for other laser based shops, that could definitely be a great customer for them. The Instagram strategy, general tips to get an active following, please. Well, I have a super, 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 I would say sneaky. I would call it more scrappy than sneaky but a way to do this where you are actually building a following quickly of potential customers, people who are actually interested in your type of style, aesthetic, design, product, everything. And this is something I really do reserve for my students um, because it works so well so quickly and it's part of my secret sauce that I that I keep just for them. Which label printer do you use? We use the Rolo and we got it way too late. So if you're on the fence about getting one and you're getting, you know, good weekly sales, maybe daily sales, I would jump on it. What do you think about free shipping or does it not matter? Thanks, Dylan. Thank you. So I would say you can test both options. Certain customers, certain categories really expect free shipping. And really I would take the lead from the competition. If the entire competition is offering free shipping and you are not, then I might uh, think twice about that. You can always test it though. Um, it's always something worth testing. I've tested both. I never recommend that a shop do it one way for the entire time. I recommend that they do test both. So if you've always had free shipping, I recommend trying testing it without. If you always have had it without, then I recommend trying free shipping. Test it for more than a week. I would say at least three weeks for a test. What are some top selling digital products to start in 2023? So I would be very cautious about just doing general products that are very saturated, like planners or just random AI art or something like that. I would be much more specific with who you're targeting and what their interests are instead of just doing general things. Get more specific. That's what I think will become a top seller for you faster uh, if you're not currently a big market leader shop. 
Is shipping international worth it? How do you stay up to date with different international laws? Well, Etsy is pretty good about notifying you of different rules and changing laws and things like that, but 100% international shipping is worth it. Your margin can actually be higher with international orders if you set this up correctly, so that maybe your domestic orders are getting free shipping within the US, um, and then your international orders are paying the full shipping amount. So your margin on those international orders can actually be higher and help drive your overall blended margin up. I have a nice amount of sales on my Etsy shop, over 60,000, but almost all of my traffic comes from my YouTube channel. I really wish I could get more organic traffic and not have to rely on promoting all the time on my channel. Any tips? I feel like I'm following all the rules when making my listings. On a side note, thanks for all your very interesting and informative content. I started binge watching your videos recently and I won't miss one. I'm about halfway through them. Keep it up. I will keep it up. Thank you for that nice comment. Um, that's great that you're getting that much traffic from YouTube. I would heavily focus on things like Facebook and Instagram, potentially TikTok, depending on what you are selling. And obviously Pinterest, that's the long game. So you won't see the results immediately from that. But if you are getting that much traffic from YouTube, it kind of seems like your eggs might be all in one basket here for, for traffic. So I would diversify your efforts a little bit and focus on the Facebook strategy and then Pinterest and Instagram. Should you add a listing in another language, even dual language in a single item listing in a USA shop? How does SEO work there? So your SEO needs to be consistent. So stick with one language in one listing. Don't be mixing languages. Depending on who your customers are, you could add a listing in another language, but I would ask yourself, would it be profitable to do that? Is that a profitable way to spend my time? Is there actually a big customer base who might not speak English, might not be searching in English that would be a potential customer for me long-term? Really consider that before you put all this time into creating duplicate listings. Think about who your customer is where they are and how they search. This is an interesting one. Dylan, you are one of the pioneers back in 2016, 2017 to find and make a high ticket item. The high ticket item is the way to reach multi six figures amount. What about the sellers who sell items $20 and below? There may not be a high ticket item that our target customer is within our niche to sell. Even if we drive traffic to Etsy, would we have to buy more laser machines, cricket machines, etc., and hire personnel to multiply $20 orders to reach multi figures. Is that worth it on a low ticket item? Do we try to start all over with a second shop and find the high ticket item with a new high end customer with a high ticket item? We may only need to buy one more laser and hire one person for production to make a great living. This is for physical products. If you have sales in your shop, I would never recommend starting a new shop. I really wouldn't. I also would not recommend starting over. Sometimes it just means integrating some different price points into your mix. So I'm really big on these seven types of products to have in your shop. These seven types of products aren't like a t-shirt and a mug. This is like the idea of a loss leader. A loss leader is one of those seven types of products. Some of these products, they're meant to drive up your order number really high, really fast. So they are lower margin, lower price point items that are doing this. But some of those other seven types of items are really meant to drive up your revenue. So with this, I would not start a new shop. I would not completely scrap what you have, but I would look at your product mix and make it more well-rounded, serving the same customer as long as you are are currently targeting a profitable customer. And if you're not currently targeting a profitable customer, you can shift into that gradually. You don't need to scrap everything you've done. Sometimes all it takes is repackaging with new marketing what you currently have in your shop to make it appealing to a profitable customer segment. So I wouldn't do anything drastic here, but I would start to make some shifts and changes in your product mix. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Please give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed seeing my husband and baby Graham here earlier. I really appreciate all the support you've given us. If you're interested in any one-on-one -on -one help, just reach out to me on Instagram at Dylan Jaris. Otherwise, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video.